Greetings Jedi Traders, David here of TradingFibs.com to bring you the week outlook, technical momentum outlook for week four, uh, ending off January, last week of January 2017. As always, please seek financial advisement when trading with your money, as these videos are for educational purposes only, support your knowledge in the market, see what's going through my head on any given day. Always make sure you have a solid trading plan and always manage your stop when placing a trade. All right, week three out of the way. Make sure you check out the week three recap here posted at tradingfibs.com. Week three recap goes through the videos and the highlights of the week as each day, uh, pre-session, trading session recap, I'm sorry, trading session recap at the end of each day, including a pre-market trend, looking at the multiple Murray la Multiple, uh, multiple Murray math lines, Murray math lines, in combination with the Heiken Ashi bars. Let's go through the uh, key highest probability steps that we look for each day, and then we'll take a look at the bigger trend as we head into next week. Uh, again, intraday, we're looking using a range chart being ready in both directions, uh, not trying to determine at any given day that the direction is up or down. Uh, price action moves in both directions here on the futures. But uh, we're looking for price action for entry setups below the 5144 cloud, the hike in Ashi bars to keep you in trend, hopefully the setup to take you all the way down or all the way up in combination with a 534 and a 5144 EMA. That's the cloud here represented by the horizontal bottom bar. Also, once in the trade, options there are the trade management possibilities of in and out two contracts one contract eight contracts whatever it is that you're trading have yourself a trading plan learn to stay in as long as possible by using the swing stops and uh, counter trend candles to keep you in the trade as long as possible all right so this is the short term look now let's go ahead and take a look as we head into week uh week four of the market where are we currently big picture wise well in each day's recap we go through the uh, daily gap the daily gap is a bigger picture of where price action uh, to just give us a general consensus of where are open gaps in the market where price action has not been filled and whether you're a believer or not in this it doesn't matter with 100 percent guarantee all gaps all open gaps on the indices eventually get closed so why am our nearest open gap down at 18 929 Mark that on the chart. I'm not telling you it's coming now. I'm not telling you it's coming tomorrow, next week, in six weeks, in a year, in five years. I'm just saying eventually it will get closed out as well as all the way down to 9, uh, 15,924. So that is a number uh, as you uh, go through each weekly recap. I, I uh, reiterate those also during the week. So keep those in mind as well. So the big picture, we know we've been consolidating up at the tops here, unable to uh, hit that 20K. Um, I got to say, eventually we will get that 20K. We will ring the bell. We got a long year to go. It's been a frustrating first three weeks of the market. I know there are days where there are pockets of good trend, um, but it is not a roaring market. Obviously, you can see we're holding in a height range of 300 points here on the YM here from 22 uh, about 2275 down to 2230 about a 40 point range on the ES and the NQ uh, making a little bit of a higher move as it hit the 5k but once we've gotten up to these upper portions we're really holding in about a 20 to 30 point range so not much to speak of again open gaps all the way down below on the ES down to 186075 uh, all the way up here to 21.9725, the nearest open gap. And on the NQ, all the way down, yes, all the way down to 40.17. I got nothing below that, 40.17. And the nearest open gap at this point, 46.1075. All right, so that's where we are currently in the trend. Being ready in both directions means looking at the bigger time frames, knowing where the smaller time frames are in any given day, also to be ready in both directions. Also pointed out on crude here, one of the indices or one of the uh, markets that we'll go and look for, uh, at today. Our nearest open gap just uh, opened up here on Friday, uh, 52.67 downside with 55.41 as we continue to do this uh, back and forth range bound uh, of the crude from a low of 50 all the way up to about 55, almost hit that 55.41 there uh, last week or two about two and a half weeks ago.
All right, so let's jump in. Uh, let's jump into the daily big pick as we do each day. Uh, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to include uh, the 60 minute and the 15 minute chart uh, here on the top row we have the NQ weekly we have the daily top and four hour chart on the right hand side bottom chart 60 minute and the bottom right the 15 minute again the 15 minute and the hourly chart those are uh, charts with these levels Murray math levels which uh, move every certain segment of bars um, it is a a, a, a state as stationary as, as the time frame you put it on. So for instance, the daily won't move as much as the 15 minute or a range. 15 minute though, you could see here from Friday's session, uh, the last uh, January 20th here, as price action for the most part held from the AM, uh, early AM pre-trend and all the way through the end of the day. So we could see here 50.78 was the high. We were looking for actually 50 39, but the uh, uh, charts reset themselves on the 15 minute, whereas on the, I'll go ahead and show you, we had an example here, the 50, 39 on the 100, uh, on a 15 tick range chart, uh, maintained its structure here and didn't change at all. So there it was, a uh, 15 minute chart. So where are we currently in the trend? What can we look for next week? We've been waffling by the nines. When I say the nines, we seem to be hitting these uh, 50, 79, 50, uh, 69, 50, 49, 39, 29, 19, all the way down, uh, looking for that 5K. So the arrow uh, indicating this point doesn't mean that that's where we're going. It just means that based on the weekly price action here, uh, 50.78, a high that we were looking at this week and kept noting each day as we've hit this zone up here, uh, price action uh, based on the Murray math would come back down here to about major support resistance. Now, this is a weekly chart. You can see this is about two, two and a half months here. Uh, this can uh, accelerate. It cannot come down. It can go back up. But right now, uh, you want to know that the bigger chart is hitting some highs here that we want to keep in mind that once we hit some of these highs and we can push higher, we can get up to 56 up here, even up to 52.34 before this thing turns around. But based on just the fact that it hit resistance, we want to be watching for price action to get back under 5K. Once it gets under 5K, so I might as well move that. Uh, let's move that a little bit down to make that more clear. So there it is. If we get below 5K, then we wanna start looking at 46.8750, all right? Same thing here on the NQ, we get below 5K. This is the daily chart still holding uh, above the uh, 50 and the 200 that we could see here at 49.23 and 47.50 as we continue to hold up here. Now, where's the probability that we might continue higher? Well, we take a look at the NQ here as we are currently in an uptrend on the four hour chart, we might be looking at 51.56 all the way up here, 51.56, which again, would put us in equal um, levels here with the weekly chart back up here on the overbought. So current trend on the four hour chart would be, be looking upside, 60 minute, 50 minute, remember, I wanna be clear that these can, these charts can reset themselves each day. Um, but uh, the 60 minute chart, obviously, this has been uh, almost uh, 10 days of uh, trading action. So the 60 minute chart won't change as fast. The fact that we've hit the resistance up here, 50.78 and price action came back down, uh, looking for, as we roll into next week, back down to 50.39 as a possibility. And then 15 minute chart, the fact that we hit, maintain these lows here at 58 today would mean that we most likely might go back and retest at least 5068 up to 5078. So again, uh, this is a intraday, uh, this is the big picture intraday, uh, looking at the Globex overnight, reassessing in the morning, be ready in both directions, putting out the levels, and that's how you approach each day. But the bigger picture right now, weekly at the highs, daily at the highs, but at least on the four hour chart, we have some room to come back up to 5156. Again, the, the chart is here, I'll post it in the weekly outlook so you can take a look at the chart, look at the levels and mark them uh, accordingly. All right, taking a look at the YM, let's uh, take a look here. 
All right, the indices of YM is we haven't reached that 20K, so we're uh, stalling here. Again, price action, the current trend is upside. We haven't hit that resistance, so I got to go with the probability that weekly upside is still at the 20K, 20K here on the daily. As we hit the support here, my expectations that we at least come up here to 19.844. Now, the fact that the 60 minute uh, is also up here, 19.766 was the resistance. Uh, the fact is that this price action on the MML on the on the YM would pull back to 19.688. So I got to be ready for that level downside if we pull back, which would be in congruence here with the 15 minute. Now the fact that the 15 minute hit the 6.88 today, we could see that here as well. Uh, I would expect the price action again waffling in between these two very tight range today, 7.66 here to 6.88. So. That's only about a, uh, 80, 80 points there, so 80 ticks. So uh, the fact that uh, we're in between, we can go in either direction here in the 15 minute. Obviously, we'll wait till next week to see where we end up. But again, paying attention to the top row, uh, the 20K upside, any probability uh, of any pullback will be supported on the lower time frame. Uh, but watch the 688 again for support rolling into Monday, and then we'll look to the lower time frames. All right, taking a look at the ES. Let's get the four hour, 60 minute, 15 minute. All right, so currently, uh, current, uh, we are in this gap of 81.25 to 2250. And then price action here on the ES here, uh, 2281, also to 2250, holding inside here. So the fact that we've hit up here, the probability is as long as we continue to consolidate, if any breakthrough to the downside, we'll want to look to that 21.25. Uh, and then uh, first we'll look to 2250 as we hold inside, as we can see here on the four hour chart, smaller time frame, uh, any pullback to 2250. Anything higher, we'll be looking at 2273 and eventually up to 2281, as we can see here on both the 15 minute chart and the 60 minute chart. Now, I like to tie these in with the range chart. So let's uh, let's for a moment go to the range chart as we do each day. Here we can see the NQ. And again, tying that into the higher time frames and the lower time frames. Here you have the NQ on a hundred tick on a hundred tick chart as price action again holding up here at the 5078. So as mentioned before, we can continue a little bit higher, but any pullback will be looking down to the nines, 5039 all the way down to 5,000 eventually. Currently, we are in a strong uptrend, 51.44. So I still want to go with the probability that we're holding up at the highs. We're can, we might push higher. And as long as we push higher, um, uh, we'll continue in that trend, 51.44. But any pullback will look to these levels downside as well. All right, let's uh, jump over to the uh, YM charts right there. All right, YM, well, again, similar picture, 2273 has been the resistance up here. I want to be looking back uh, to 2250 all the way down. I apologize, this is the ES, not the YM, ES, uh, all the way down back to 2250. I looked at those levels. We looked at those levels here, back here on the ES. Again, we mentioned 2250 here on the four-hour chart, but also to the upside, 2273 a level to or a level to be uh, watch in the coming week. So there it is, 2273 for the breakout. Anything downside you can see here, 2057, 2250, as well as very strong uptrend, 5144 for some time now is the Heiken Ashi bars have been holding upside. All right, and last, let's take a look at the YM as we consolidate here at the highs. We saw that on the daily gap chart you could see here. And on the range chart, price action again, uh, finding that support here around 648, major support resistance back up at 19,844, and then eventually up there at 20K. So range chart is more for an intraday, but again, you got to appreciate the fact that uh, we go back here in some time here. We look back, uh, let's say you're trading the ETF, whether it's the diamonds, the SPY, the triple Q, here was your entry back here, breakout around uh, November 9th, and has been holding upside ever since. So right now, I couldn't confirm whether we're going up or down until we have some trend change. Currently, we continue in the uptrend. All right, let me go ahead and uh, these will be posted in the, uh, let me pull these up. These will be posted in 
the uh, technical momentum, but go ahead and mark these on your charts. This is the weekly, the four hour and the hour levels that you wanna watch. This is for the ES all the way up to that range, 2250, 2282 uh, on the weekly. And then here on the YM, uh, the ranges up here from the weekly to the four hour and the hourly charts. All right, uh, let's take a look at some of the other in markets that we look at each day. Let's start with 6E, or let's start with the yen here. As we saw this week, the yen with an incredible move downside. Price action, for the most part, weekly has been in a downtrend as the other indices have been upside. So yen holding here around 87.50. So with the current trend downside, both on the weekly and the daily, and we can see here the four hour chart, obviously waffling a little bit as it changes more often, but holding underneath the 50 and the 200, current trend now downside on the weekly, finds the oversold, finds the support. I have to go with the pullback to at least maybe 93.75, which would put us back up at resistance on the weekly. The fact that 87.50 resistance up here was hit, I got to go with the probability that maybe 85.93 might be the pullback or to continue this drive down as we would hit 85.93 before we get to 81.25. So the fact that both four hour, 60 minute and the 15 minute are in a current downtrend as we've already hit resistance, we're at a major support resistance. The fact that we're coming off the resistance from the high, so downtrend, downtrend, downtrend. I have to go with the probability that most likely we will continue downside, but hitting some of these levels first, 86.71, 85.93, and at least 85.93, both on the four hour and the 60 minute before we were to migrate any lower. But 86.71 would be that level to watch first. So yes, it definitely a pullback can occur at least up to 93.75. But if it does and we continue this downtrend, obviously some of these levels might reset into next week. All right, taking a look at the 6E euro. 60 euro again has been in a downtrend for some time here, uh, coming off the resistance, but we have been shopping. Price action finding off the support, so any pullback up to a buck 12 up here. Price action on the daily also, uh, back above the 50, in between the 50, 200, so we got some room to pull up. If we can break this major support resistance, I'll be looking to a buck nine first, but the fact that we're holding at these highs on the four hour chart, I would look for a pullback to at least a buck four. So a little bit of a range there. So a pullback to a buck uh, four. Here we have uh, price action uh, migrating up to a buck seven on the 60 minute chart. And the 15 minute chart would be a buck, a pullback to a buck six. So we're we're all across the board on the 60. So again, the bigger trend, definitely a uh, room to uh, move back upside, uh, back upside on the daily as well. The four hour chart would want to be uh, currently looking for the pullback. But again, uh, I would look for the 60 minute and the 15 minute. So 15 minute might pull back on uh, 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 overnight, uh, on Sunday night, Monday uh, session. But we'll be looking for the hourly chart to at least maybe get up here to a buck seven. And then uh, obviously watching the bigger uh, trend charts on top. All right, let's uh, roll it into the crude and the gold to wrap this up. Uh, taking a look at gold first, as gold has been uh, coming down and uh, getting some nice moves back to the upside. Again, current picture on the big uh, uh, weekly here has been uh, holding at support 11.25. So I got to go upside to at least 12.50. If we break the 12.50, we go back up to uh, back up to 13.75. So right now, again, price action uh, coming back around 5,200. Watch the 200 rejection upside or resistance, but we'll be looking up here to 1250, 1250. Uh, again, four hour chart, 1218. Uh, we're coming off the high, so I might want to see a pullback probable to 11, 1187.50. If we continue to move up higher, uh, then we'll be looking back up at 1218. 60 minute chart back up to 1218. If we can break above the 1210 here on the 60 minute and then the 15 minute chart again 15 minute chart resets itself about every session and a half so uh the fact that we're upside current trend would pull it back down to about 1203 uh, or 1195.3 all right let's wrap this up on the crude as price action on the crude 
Uh, bigger picture, holding upside here, support 37.50 back upside. Uh, we have broken major support resistance, so I got to look up here to 62.50. 56.25 would be the first level that I'd be looking at as we're holding above the 50 and 200. Uh, the fact that we're holding above the major support resistance on the four hour chart, 53.13 puts me first at 54.69 before I make it up to 56.25. Uh, again, remember that open gap on the crude. 60-minute uh, chart, a mm, little bit of resistance here at 53, so we might see the pullback first to 52.34. And on the 15-minute chart, we can go either way. Uh, back upside, if we find the support here, back up to 53.52. So 53.13, 53.52 would be the first level's upside. Anything downside would start with 52.73. And then I'd be looking at uh, also the major support resistance and back down to 51.56 before I start looking at any lower levels. All right, that concludes this week's for week four weekly trend outlook. Uh, feel free to stop by tradingfit.com or any of my social media outlets to obtain more information. The mantra, one simple strategy every day, any market, any chart, any time frame will keep you disciplined just like the chart here. You can find me every day on Twitter at Trading Fibs. And as always, I leave the crystal ball to the experts. I only trade what's in front of me or watch what's in front of me first on the charts. And as always, I leave my bias at the door when trading. Hey, Jedi traders, for those of you who are interested in joining us in our community of like-minded traders seeking those highest probability setups, feel free to email me, david at tradingfibs.com. And you may join us on any Thursday or Friday to view the live charts as they happen in the trading day. Hey guys, I know a lot to go through. Feel free to pause the video, take a look at the numbers, take a look at the charts, write down anything you need. And if you have any questions, feel free to email. Hey guys, have yourselves a blue zone weekend. Have yourselves a blue zone week, week number four of the market. And have yourselves a good day, a good night, a good week, and good trading to you.